All right, hello guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how we can go from seeing very warm temperatures in the east to end September to possibly seeing some pretty cool temperatures after the 5th of October. I'm gonna talk all about this in this video, but before I get started with this video though, I would ask you to do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to check out our links in our description for our social medias. Now, I need to make a couple disclaimers here. I am under the weather. I really wanted to make a video though, so I probably shouldn't be making a video just because I don't really have the energy to do it, but I decided that I really want to because I missed yesterday and it just, I don't want to miss two days in a row. I really don't. I love making these videos for you guys and I will do it whether I'm healthy or sick. Now, another disclaimer, the models and everything has been, as far as like the pattern in the United States has been very volatile. We've seen them call for cooldowns in the past month or so that really don't happen, especially at this range. I do feel pretty confident because this seems like they're a little more sure of this one than in the past. So there is a possibility that it's not as potent as what it's showing. And there's a slim possibility that it doesn't happen whatsoever. But the European and GFS seem quite confident that this could happen. This channel, you know, it's not about always about just forecasting and being like, this is what's going to happen. A lot of this channel is actually me just going over the model runs with you guys and showing what they're showing, but also adding the disclaimer that, you know, models are not always 100% perfect. So we are checking out the models together here, but again, they aren't perfect and they can't be held to perfection because that's where, you know, meteorology and forecasting comes in. The models aren't perfect. We use them as a tool. And then we try to decipher what's going to happen and what isn't going to happen. But again, mistakes happen. Now, they for now, the GFS is showing a big cooldown. And the reason I do believe that this is actually quite uh, correct is we are seeing the ensemble of models, according to, the, according to NOAA here, uh, that we are going to see the AO and the NAO go positive, or negative, sorry. Now, they are... The AO is positive right now. The NAO is neutral. We've seen the effects of that. We have very warm temperatures in the east right now, and we will, for the next five or ten days, have a remaining warm period of air there. Now, I wanted to show you this graph of the AO. Now, here's the important things to know. The black and red lines is basically the values of this oscillation, whether it's going to be positive or negative. When it's up, it's positive. When it's down, it's negative. In a negative phase, we expect more colder temperatures for the eastern United States. And in a positive phase, we expect warmer temperatures for the eastern United States. And you can see this is going to dip down by those red lines. That's the ensemble of models. And you can see each of them has it going down under negative value. That dashed line is our what deciphers or what separates positive and negative values. You can see we're going to go under as far as the AO is concerned. Then maybe back positive after the 10th, but that's a little bit long range. So we're going to... Uh, wait to go ahead and call for that until we're a little bit closer. Now we're looking at the NAO and it's the same thing. Negative or down is negative values and negative values means colder for the east and positive values means warmer temperatures for the east. And you can see this one is also going to go quite far down negative and it's pretty significant on this one. It goes pretty far down. Again, maybe goes back towards neutral or positive after the 10th or 12th, somewhere in that time frame. But again, we're going to get closer, and obviously I bring you guys at least once a week one of these temperature forecasts, so we're going to definitely talk about it before uh, before we get there. We will have another discussion, so we can see what's happening by then, but that's pretty far out for now. Now, we're going to be looking at the upper air 500 millibar geopotential height uh, anomalies here, and all you need to know for this is that blues are usually associated with either low pressure or below average temperatures and then reds are usually associated with high um, pressure or above average temperatures and this is what we're looking at right now i'm going to be breaking down every single day in this model run for you guys in the upper air you can see we do have negative values there for a lot of canada and the western united states or at least some of those north central united states and then you see we have a lot of negative values down there for the four corner states that's where we're having a I think it's it was a tropical system impact, you guys, down there. So it's probably bringing below average temperatures and lower pressure, obviously. New England also has negative geopotential height there. We're going to move on one day, and you can see it looks like we're almost getting a trough for the central and eastern United States head in. You can see that blue for the central United States heading further south and further east. Uh, but by uh, September 27th, this is Friday, you can see that it, is, it kind of recedes and goes back up. New England may be feeling some below average temperatures. And again, the north central United States as well, Montana, North Dakota, you're feeling it. But 
Uh, by the 28th, it heads even further west. And now, by this point, we have a trough, a pretty decent trough there for the western United States and a big ridge for the eastern United States. And this has been quite typical of the pattern we've been in for quite a while now. We're going to move on to the 29th, and you can see the trough is just digging even deeper there for the west, and the ridge is just getting even higher there for the east. This is the 29th of September, Sunday 29th. Then by Monday the 30th, we could see that ridge is even bigger, trough even bigger. So this pattern looks to set in for quite a while of a trough in the west, ridge in the east, you know, warmer temperatures for the east, colder temperatures for the west. Uh, and this is what we've been dealing with for almost, I think, two or three weeks now. So it's been quite consistent. And uh, here by the 1st of October, Maybe things weakening as far as the ridge in the east a little bit. That trough is still just sitting there in the west, though. And then by the second, you can see the trough starts to move a little bit east. That ridge is still standing strong, but that trough out there in the west is moving a little bit east as it's right over Nevada, Utah, and Idaho now. It used to be over the Pacific Northwest and California. So we're seeing this move a little bit east by the 2nd of October. Now, I wanted to mention this is by time the NAO and AO are fully negative. And I've always talked about this, but when those oscillations switch, there is a bit of a lag. That's why if you see them switch for only a day or two, you never really feel it. It doesn't really ever take full effect. But this one looks to stay where the AO and negative are going to, or the AO and NAO are going to stay negative for probably five or more days once they do go negative, maybe five to 10 days. So we're going to really see this take effect, but it, it is going to lag behind a little bit. So we've seen them switch by the second. Moving on to the third, you can see that ridge is really heading further south in the east. And then that trough is really broken up over the western United States and central United States. So it's, it looks kind of sloppy, the pattern right here by the third. This is Thursday, October 3rd, by the way. Now, by the 4th, you can see we see a ridge starting to build there for the western or central United States. And then finally, a little bit of a trough starting to dig in for the northeast there. So this is very interesting. Fourth, I would, I would put down in your calendars that the 4th looks like a day where we could see a major switch up in the pattern. The 3rd looks like the transition month or the transition day. And then the 4th finally looks like the day where we've kind of transitioned into a whole other pattern than we've been dealing with for quite a while. Uh, and then by the 5th, again, this is a little bit of a confusing pattern. We have a ridge in the very middle of the United States and then a trough on both coasts. Uh, we've seen it before, uh, but this is kind of sloppy, and it doesn't look like this is going to be the pattern that sets in for a long time, as by the 6th, Sunday, October 6th, we have a bigger ridge heading for the southwestern United States, and that's really going to help that cold enter the eastern United States here quite soon. Uh, and by the 7th, you can see that ridge is building even further in the west, and that trough is digging even further south in the east, dealing with some below average temperatures in the east by this point, if this does verify, obviously. This is 282 hours out, so this is a little bit hard to say. Again, I'm just presenting you guys what the models are showing. This isn't necessarily a forecast quite yet, as it would be irresponsible to do that, because the models, as of lately, have been especially... Uh, all over the place and not really quite sure what they want to show. But I am actually, you know, at least 50 or 60% confident in this because it does seem like the models are agreeing on this and the teleconnections look to head in a direction that would really lead towards a pattern like this. So there's multiple things that make me a little bit confident in this. And by the 8th, they have a really big trough there for the east and a really big ridge there for the west. Uh, this would be quite cold. We would be feeling, you know, a lot of the mid-Atlantic, I would say, in the daytime would be feeling 60s. And a lot of the northern United States there in the east would be feeling even colder temperatures. I think everybody would be feeling about 5 degrees to 10 degrees below average Fahrenheit by this point. So it would be quite cold comparatively to normal, uh, what you're usually used to. And we've been dealing with far above average temperatures. So even getting average temperatures is going to feel quite noticeable at this point. But I think we could be dealing with quite far below average temperatures. We're going to move on to the 9th, and you can see that trough is still standing strong there in the east, and we have a pretty big ridge there still in the west, holding on strong once again. And by the 10th, uh, it's it's quite clear that the trough is headed a little bit further north, but still we're dealing with average to below average temperatures in the east and above average temperatures out there west on the 10th. Now, I want to show you the temperature patterns according to the GEFS, the GFS Ensemble model, in five-day increments. So this is the first day of the run through the fifth. So this is 
Uh, this should be September 25th through the September 30th here. Again, this looks pretty similar to the pattern we've been feeling for quite a while now. Cold there in the northwest, a little bit of cold there along the west coast, southwest as well, and then really warm east of the Rockies for the most part. Now, for the 25th through the 6th, it's kind of the same story, except that cold has moved a little bit east and a little bit north, and then the ridge has actually gotten stronger by this point. So from the 29th through the 4th, not much of a change. But major changes from the 3rd of October through the 8th of October. Uh, we see the cold temperatures enter the northeast. I, I would say this is cut in half by north to south. You can see that in the south we have above average temperatures, and in the north we see below average temperatures. And this is quite consistent with a normal pattern switch when we see the cold move from the west to the east. That cold will be quite consistent over the north, but the south is still pretty warm as we're seeing that transition. And then here's our last frame. You can see from the 6th through the 11th of October, the cold has finally entered where it's in the north central United States and then pretty consistent over the east. Uh, over a five-day period, we see light blues, but there will be times when we see far below average temperatures, obviously, for some areas. But to see below average temperatures for an entire five-day period is pretty uh, pretty crazy for the pattern we've been in. It's going to be a really big noticeable difference once we do actually see this, whether it's during this time frame or if it's sometime after, we will be feeling pretty cold compared to what we have been feeling in the last little, I guess, month or so. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Again, this is just a model run and it's been quite volatile, but I did want to show you guys because I like to keep you guys informed with what the models are showing. I feel like a lot of other weather sources don't quite do that. I feel like they kind of just hold things to their self until the last moment and then they finally show you guys. So like if it's going to get a cool down, they won't tell you until it's about three days out. But I like to tell you guys far in advance that it is possible, but not not definite. And I think you guys do a really good job of receiving that. And I don't usually get a lot of comments where people are complaining if it didn't happen, because I like to show you guys really early on if it's possible rather than being 100% sure and only showing you guys once it's like two days out. I like to keep everybody informed on what might happen. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, everybody.